Hello everyone, my name is Roy Jafari and in this video we are going to familiarize ourselves with the dataset Toyota Corolla. If you haven't watched my video that I explain how we normally go about getting to know new datasets, um, stop this video and go up and watch that video first. So the reason we are learning this new dataset is that we are going to be using this dataset in the future videos. So let's get to it. So we are going to be using these three modules. So I'm going to go ahead and import them first and then we're going to read uh, the data set Toyota Corolla.csv. This data set is rather large. If you look at the data set, we have 39 attributes, about 1,436 data rows. When I say it's large, what I mean by that is more so that it has a lot of attributes. So you can go ahead and read all of these attributes, but for the intent and purposes of this video, these too many attributes are kind of too much for us to cover. So uh, we're just going to be looking at a select number of columns. So these are the columns that we're going to be looking at. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, make sure that only these columns that are of column of columns of interest are going to be in the data set. So now if I were to say cardf.shape and I run this, now we only have 11 attributes. As we saw, the way we learn, we get to know uh, uh, numerical attributes is by looking at the function describe, which basically come up with count, mean, standard deviation, maximum, minimum of all of these numerical attributes. Uh, most of the time, what we really want to look at is the minimum and the standard deviation. And we can sort of like look at these, you know, the age, uh, the in a you know, number of kilometers uh, that the car has run, the horsepower, if the car is metallic or not, if the car is automatic or not, the CC, number of doors, the amount of quarterly tax, the weight, and finally the price. These are you know, good uh, metrics to look at as far as getting to know the data, but it's not going to be never, it's going to be as good as good visualizations to get to know numerical attributes you have seen good visualizations are uh, histograms and box plot and if you combine them uh, like I have done here you're going to get the uh, best uh, outcome so um, you know one thing I want you to do before continuing watching this video is to study these um, you know visuals you know the histogram and the box plot together and sort of get an understanding of where are the variations and you know the, the numbers that these numerical attributes have. So once you sort of like get a good handle on the numerical attributes, we uh, normally, the next step is to look at the categorical attributes. Here we have three categorical attributes. And for categorical attributes, the best way to summarize them is to use bar charts. Uh, and we have three categorical attributes. This is the their bar charts, automatic and red color. So this is as far as we went um, in the previous video that I talked about how to get to know new data set. Um, when our purpose in using a new data set is just perhaps sort of like coming up with some visualization, this levels of this level of getting to know the data is enough. But since we are going to use this data set, Toyota Corolla data set, for predictive modeling, um, it's better to also look at the relationship between the attributes that the, uh, you know, they do have among the population of this data set. So first we look at uh, the relationship between the numerical attributes. And the best way to do that is really uh, create a, a scatter matrix. And I have used the um, Seaborn a module and the function pair plot to do that for us. Uh, it will take a minute, I mean not a minute, like in a few seconds for this uh, to run, uh, but also, you know, basically the uh, scatter mat matrix is a visual way of sort of doing a correlation. So let me go ahead and also run the correlation here. So this is the correlation, it's, this is the scatter mat matrix. Now we can, uh, you know, from the top study every combination of numerical attributes and see 
how they relate with one another. So for example, one uh, relationship that might be interest is the fact that price and age has a negative correlation as the age increases the price of the car goes down which makes sense um, you know such uh, such relationships um, exist among uh, the other uh, you know parts of the status so we want to like study this um, you could um, also just study the correlation i mean it's sort of the same thing and you could also use the rule of thumb to make it easier for yourself and say okay i just want to like look at the relationships that uh, the absolute correlation is um, more than 0.7 and you can see that the only one that sort of like has that sort of concern uh, is this uh, this one that makes sense and since i um, mean in the future video we will see that we're going to be using these attributes to predict or sort of like figure out what are the factors that uh, changes the price of a car um, this is actually good that one of the attributes has such high correlation so among the rest of them there is no um, sort of like a flag worthy correlation so we can just like uh, continue uh, with no uh, concerns here another thing that we can do and we should do is to examine the relationship uh, among the categorical attributes to do that we use something we call contingency table and the pandas uh, cross tab function can does that for us so basically you put um, each of the attributes um, you know the data of each attribute in this function and it creates that cross tab uh, the contingency table for you and then I have also taken one more step by dividing it by the sum of um, you know, all of the values of the attributes, which gives us the probability table that is more intuitive as far as just looking at the relationship among uh, these two attributes. So let's go ahead and look at all of the possibility here. So uh, for example, here we do see a very um, you know small relationship between automatic and fuel type you can see when the automatic if the car is automatic or not changes the chance of it being petrol is much higher than when it's not automatic so there is a slight relationship between these two attributes but if you look at these two um, you can see that the metallic color and the fuel type are not do not have a relationship with one another at all so uh, the way we go about seeing if there is a relationship is really seeing if there is a color change among each of uh, these colors. If there are color change that are meaningful to our eyes, then there is a relationship. So there is no relationship here. Uh, there is no relationship here, no relationship. Uh, there is some other relationship here and so on and so forth. The last thing we will do in this video we will look at the relationship between categorical attributes and numerical attributes and since um, you know categorical attributes or numerical attributes are not of the same type of value it's somewhat of a challenge to uh, sort of uh, look at the relationship the best way to go about this is to change one of these attributes to the other type and then use the method that we use to see look at the relationship between those attributes so let's go ahead and dumb down the numerical attributes. When we dumb down numerical attributes, basically, instead of letting the numbers present them, we uh, group them into a couple of groups. And those groups are the new representation that are categorical. And now we can use the uh, contingency table to sort of show the relationship between these attributes. So here I have used the function pd.cut to, uh, to create five bins. Um, for each of the numerical attributes and I'm also saying I don't want the labels to be there I want like you know integer one two three four five to be there and then once I discretized I mean this is what we call when we uh, switch the numerical attributes to a category categorical attribute we discretize our data so we now we look we use a discretized um, attribute to um, create the contingency table with the categorical attribute and now we can sort of start uh, examining the relationship between categorical attributes and uh, numerical attributes so here we can see age and fuel type has somewhat of a, somewhat of a relationship uh, there is a definite relationship between the 
amount of kilometers and the fuel type and so on and so forth so I highly recommend that uh, you uh, study all of these relationships like I said one of the things that is important when you get to predictive modeling not only you want to be able to um, know what's going on within each attribute you also want to see if there are relationship among those attributes so in this video we're able to use the functionalities that python and pandas have for us to get to know uh, this new data set that we're going to be uh, using for predictive modeling uh, in the next few videos